Ah, there we go. Okay. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm Dr. Ryan Petty. I'm the interim dean of the College of Business here at Roosevelt University, and it's my pleasure to welcome everybody uh, to this session of the American Dream Reconsidered Conference, uh, which is titled The Conversation with Melissa Conyers Irving, who is the treasurer of the city of Chicago and also a proud uh, Roosevelt alumna. Uh, I'd like to take this opportunity first uh, to introduce uh, Mr. Todd Sholeen from Huntington Bank, who's our title sponsor. Todd, please. We thank you very much for your generous uh, sponsorship of this. We very much appreciate the opportunity here. Um, uh, students, uh, please take a look at uh, the screen behind me here. Um, Huntington Bank uh, has just opened up their internship uh, portal uh, for uh, internship opportunities there. So please take a look at that link, take notes. We will also be emailing all of you with uh, this information, uh, more information about Huntington Bank. So you'll see that it'll come from me. So please don't ignore my emails. You'll see this. So, uh, we hope that uh, we can get Mr. Sherlene some very talented students uh, at Huntington. Um, <clears throat> Uh, anyway, uh, it's now my pleasure uh, to introduce our moderator uh, for this session. Uh, this is Justin Shea. He's a visiting assistant professor of finance for the Heller College of Business. Thank you, Ryan. Justin is also a proud alumnus of Roosevelt University and the Heller College of Business. Uh, in addition to being on the faculty here at Roosevelt University, uh, he is also uh, on the faculty of the University of Chicago Graham School uh, in the Master of Science in uh, Analytics program. Um, and in addition, Justin does consulting work in the area of quantitative finance uh, for various uh, clients here in the Chicago area uh, around derivatives exchange. So I'm going to turn the program over to Justin, who will introduce our guest of honor uh, and take it from there. Thank you, Ryan. So today I have the pleasure of introducing Melissa Conyers Irvin, City of Chicago Treasurer. Uh, elected in 2019, Melissa believes in the promise of opportunity and strength of families to effectively address the needs of our community. She was the first in her family to graduate from the college and earned her MBA right here at Roosevelt, which is something that I think many of us can relate to. Melissa has 15 years of experience working in the insurance industry as a manager for Allstate and CS Insurance Strategies. As a former state representative of the 10th District, Melissa sponsored the Improve Illinois Education Funding Formula that directed over $221 million in additional funding to CPS. She was also the chief sponsor of bipartisan legislation that protected funding for child care assistance and a service that allows many working parents to stay in the workforce. With that, Melissa, let me please introduce you to Melissa. Thank you for coming. Testing, testing. So after that introduction, uh, why don't you uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? First, I'll say good afternoon on the microphone to everyone. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. Um, to all of the faculty, staff at Roosevelt University, students, um, as well as Dr. Ali. Thank you for your service and everything that you're doing, not only for the students of Roosevelt University, but of course for the, for the city of Chicago. I am so excited to be here on this afternoon. This is actually my very first visit back in this type of setting. Um, I visited several graduations. I'm excited. I have family members as well that graduated from Roosevelt University, Excellent. as well as friends. But in this type of setting, this will be my first. So I'm excited. I've only been city treasurer for a few months, and I'm already back to Roosevelt University. So I'm excited about that. Ooh. Yes. <laughs> so just a little bit about myself. Um, I'm first very excited to be here because, of course, I am an alumni of Roosevelt University, but second, I'm excited to be here because for this first setting for me being here, I am here at the Conference for American Dream Reconsidered. And for me, this is really a testament to me and my background. 
So I am born on the south side of Chicago in the Inglewood community. And if you know anything about Chicago, then you know about Inglewood. And then I am raised on the west side of Chicago, and I live on the west side of Chicago. Now I tell everyone that I live on the west side of Chicago by choice. I can choose to live anywhere in the city of Chicago as city treasurer, but I live on the west side of Chicago for a reason, and I'll talk about that further. But I was raised by a single mother of three girls, and I was the first in my family to go to college, like many of the students here at Roosevelt University. And I went to college, went to Eastern Illinois University, where I acquired my Bachelor of Science in Finance, went on to spend almost 15 years in the private sector, working for a Fortune 500 company, a minority female, so I'm very excited about that. I always talk about that because I believe that that is a story that needs to be shared with others. And then I have the privilege of also attending Roosevelt University, where I attended the campus in Schaumburg. I worked at Allstate in Hoffman Estates, and after work in the evening, I would go to class at Schaumburg, um, at the campus in Schaumburg, for Roosevelt University, where I acquired my MBA in finance. I did that a few times as well. <laughs> Went to the Schaumburg <laughs> campus after work. Uh, we, were, we were joking before this whole thing started uh, that we're both uh, children of Roosevelt. Yes. Yes. And then um, I need to make certain that my daughter is a child of Roosevelt, by the way. <laughs> Yay. Woo. Let me start that early. So um, I live on the west side of Chicago. My husband and I are raising our three-year-old daughter there. So a lot of the passion that I have, especially for education, is because of what I witness every day. And so everything that I'm doing, it's, it's even more passion because I think about the future of my daughter and every other child in the city of Chicago that I'm fighting for. We are so lucky to have you as our treasurer. Thank you, thank you, Justin. So let's talk about Roosevelt. What was your time at Roosevelt like? Yeah. Mm -mm. Roosevelt was a quite a new experience for me at the time. I was single, which was very good because I had a lot of work to do at Roosevelt University. I don't know how it is now, but my gosh, I was like, is this an MBA program? I'm a full-time employee. But um, certainly we had a lot of work to do. But what I enjoyed most about my experience, there were so many others like me, um, full-time employees going to school, um, night school as I was. And really it was so much collaboration that I learned at Roosevelt University. And I have to say that because I would say of everything that I learned there, of course I learned how to do finance and all of that, but really the tangible that I was able to take away that helped me to shape who I am today was really the collaboration as a student. We did a lot of activities as, activities as groups. And back then, I don't, and I don't know how it is now, but we within the group would choose whom our leader would be. And so even at the time, I was politicking to be like the leader of my group. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't know that that would prepare me for this today. Um, but certainly we did so many things in groups, so many assignments that I feel really helped me to be the outgoing person that I am. I'm, I'm truly, my husband always says that I'm an extrovert, and that's, that's purposely. Mm -hmm. And I, I really believe that it was because of the experience at Roosevelt University. And in addition to that, the staff, the staff at Roosevelt were just magnificent, very helpful, accommodating, um, understanding. And so my experience at Roosevelt University was truly above par. So I'm appreciative for that, and, and I can see that the university is still going strong. Thank you. Um, so yeah, you mentioned some really important things there, I think, which so much happens here outside of the classroom. Yes. So yes. much uh, is embodied in this place. Yes. Beyond just the content of our classes. That's right. And that was my experience as well. And now that you're in a leadership position and you've got to tackle some mm -hmm. fiscal challenges of our city, uh, what, how did your experience at Roosevelt help prepare you uh, for the decisions you have to make as That's a, a social question. justice institution and a place that cares deeply about fairness in the decisions um, we make always. And so I talk about my background for a reason because when you talk about fairness and social justice, 
you know, those are topics that are very near and dear to me. Obviously, born in Inglewood, raised on the west side of Chicago, and living on the west side of Chicago. And when I mention that I live there by choice, I always say because to me, I don't have to watch the news to know what's going on. Mm -hmm. I don't have to read the newspaper, listen to the radio. I'm living in it. I witness every day the need of the community. And so me witnessing the need gives me a desire to feed the need. And I think that's very important, and especially when I always tell people, and, and I see students, I see people of all ages here. Voting is so important, and that's a side note that I'll mention. It's so important that we elect people that are like us that we elect people that share the values that we have. Because the only way for us to protect the future of our youth and our society mm -hmm. is to make certain that we have people that are invested. Yes. That's what's important. And so when I think about the fiscal challenges of Chicago, and my role as city treasurer, a lot of people ask me, what is it that the city treasurer does? You know, when you hear treasurer, you do, you, you, obviously you think of money, but really, treasure. what does the treasurer does, right? You're like, treasurer, that must mean money, right. But it's a really hefty task. Now, when money is collected by the city of Chicago, whatever that money is, whether it's revenue by any form, some people pay revenue by, by tickets. By the way, I have nothing to do with that, okay? <laughs> <laughs> but some people pay revenue by by tickets that they pay for. Some people pay revenue by property taxes. There's a lot of ways revenue is gained. But once that revenue is gained, it is now transferred to my office, the office of the city treasurer, where we are the sole custodian of taxpayers' dollars. Very important. The sole custodian. So all revenue that is received is now transferred to my office to be the custodian. And so currently, our office manages a, a, a portfolio over $8 billion. Mm -hmm. All tax, woo, can you believe we have that much money? <laughs> when I say that, people are like taken away. Over $8 billion of a portfolio that is all taxpayers' dollars. And by the way, I love to say that when I go in front of even smaller children, they're like, eight billion, where do you live? <laughs> I'm like, sorry to bust your bubble, I live on the west side of Chicago. I'm like, that's not my money, that's your mother's money. <laughs> <laughs> but I have to make certain a city treasurer that, and this is one thing that I task my staff with, I always say, of course, my primary responsibility is to protect taxpayers' dollars. Yes. Of course, Roosevelt University has taught me how to properly invest these funds to make certain that I protect it, to make certain that I get the greatest return on my investment. But when we talk about the social justice aspect that Roosevelt also taught me, is that I have to make certain that I invest taxpayers' dollars with the mindset of taxpayers, that I leverage it. One thing that I have tasked my staff with is I say, shame on us if after our tenure that all we have done is provided a great return on investment, but that money has not been returned to the communities that need it. That would be shame on us. That's the power in the office of the city treasurer that I'm so grateful that I've been tasked with that I can go in there every day and intentionally invest with the mindset of underserved communities. You know, it's so true. We, you can chase basis points around. That's right. And that's part of the job. Yes. But it's deeper than that. Yes. How are we going to allocate these resources yes. while still producing those returns and that's being right. a custodian for these funds? That's right. So this is just it's wonderful. Again, we are lucky to have you as our treasurer. Thank you, Justin. Um, I think that segues into our next question well, mm -hmm. though. Uh, how, do we, how do you promote financial education uh, in our communities? Because you're doing some amazing things at the macro level, but mm -hmm. you know what, what can we do as individuals, as part of the community of mm -hmm. the city of Chicago, as Chicagoans? Mm -hmm. um, what, what do you advise? or what? Uh, so when I think about students in particular, yes, we have to make certain, I, and I always say financial literacy starts at a young age. Mm -hmm. My daughter is three years old, and whenever she has any money left for the day, I say, put it in your piggy bank just at a very young age. And people may think that's remedial, 
but that's starting to train her in the mindset of saving. So we have to talk about financial literacy. And I say that's for all ages, because it's not just for children, but it's for adults, it's for seniors. We have to be reminded to save. And some people say, I can't afford to save. And so my response is, you cannot afford not to save. It's so true. And that's very important. But when I think about financial literacy, I think about residents all over Chicago, 77 communities, and small businesses. Because one other aspect that, that we are tasked with as the city treasurer's office is to make certain that we are promoting small business growth. And so we have to make certain that when we think about financial literacy and residents, residents need access to capital. There's residents that I meet on a daily basis that are shocked that we are managing a portfolio of over $8 billion. And you know what I tell those residents? That includes your money. Yeah. Doesn't matter if it's a little of it, it's your money. All of us have put into the pot of $8 billion. But sometimes people feel, and I'm so happy we have Huntington Bank that is sponsoring us today, thank you. <laughs> so we're talking about access to capital. There are some residents in our community that feel as if they do not have access to the banking institutions. Well, obviously my office is interacting gr a great deal with financial institutions where we're investing our money. We want to make certain that we have that dialogue with the financial institutions and with those that also manage our pension funds. If I told you all the things that I do, it'll make your head spin. But in addition <laughs> to everything that I mentioned, I also sit on the pension funds for the city of Chicago. And that's also an important aspect because that's a lot of taxpayers' dollars. But all of that encompasses what our goal is for financial literacy. There's a lot of residents right now that do not have their money in banking institutions, personal money. We're not talking about taxpayers, the, the big pool, personal dollars. And we talk about that because usually those are the residents that cannot afford to pay the check cashing fees that they are paying at these other institutions. These are residents that cannot afford to pay the high interest rates in the loans that they acquire. We have to make certain to open that dialogue between residents and the financial institutions so that they have access and be able to cash their checks with no fees that they be able to acquire loans with a reasonable interest rate. Because again, if we do that, then we will be returning money back into the household. That's so true. And we have a lot of personal finance students here today uh, that have joined us. And Welcome. <laughs> and, and one of the things I always try to iterate is, uh, you know, financial services is a competitive market. That's right and they want to work with you. Yes. And you have choices there. Yes. And so you want to educate yourself about yes. the different financial products and services out there yes. to help you meet your long-term goals. That's right. And make that dollar you work for go a little further. Yes. And that's what it's about. That's how Absolutely. we're going to have a thriving community. Absolutely. Um, so uh, speaking of students, what knowledge would you advise students to acquire as they begin their careers? Uh, as far as um, budgeting and yes. personal finance goes. It's a big topic. It is. It's an important topic. Because we have to think about things as students. And I'm not quite sure I even thought about all the things that I should have. Um, I'm grateful for where I am today. But I could certainly be further along if there were more things that I thought about at the time. Like, number one, we have to think about when we graduate, what do we aspire? Mm -hmm. Not just the career. But look, everything, do you want to live in a home? Or do you want to live in a condo? Do you want to live in an apartment and rent? Do you want to have a family? How many children do you desire to have, if you desire to have any? All of those things you have to think about. And I know if you're like me, I was excited about my first job <laughs> offer, right? I'm excited. I'm about to make money. But you also have to think about that. Where will the job be located? Do they have moving costs if you have to move outside of where you, your, your hometown is? Do they have 401k? And even if they have 401k, we need to think about how do we save outside of that? Do they have pre-tax 
programs where you know you might be able to have a commute commuter passes or you may be able to have um, flex spending accounts where you'll be able to save towards your um, doctor's fees and things of that sort all of those things need to be taken into consideration when you think about post-graduation whether that's undergraduate or master's or PhD or whatever it is that you're acquiring, we need to think about way beyond the next step of graduation and employment. We need to be thinking beyond that. Yeah, and there's, you know, some of these things are, there's tax advantages to some of these that's things. Right. That's and, right. And uh, municipalities want you to take care of that's those right. things. That's why you set the policy, right? Yes. And I'll tell you, I live for flexible spending accounts <laughs> because these are pre-tax dollars. Right. I mean, that you, that's a win. That's money going back into my pocket. So all of those things you have to be mindful of. If you haven't heard of flex spending accounts, please look it up. It's like the best thing since sliced bread, if you <laughs> ask me, because it's pre-tax dollars. We're always trying to save. Um, so those are great programs that you really have to look into as you're looking at employment. Yeah, we're, we're going to get to that in a few weeks class, uh, <laughs> but she's exactly right. Mm -hmm. It's uh, in the same vein as why you want to invest in that 401k. That's right. Pre-tax. That's right, pre-tax. You know, um, we can all participate in a democratic society and pay That's into right. it, uh, but when that municipality and we as uh, democratic society vote to do these kind of tax breaks yes. to encourage long-term spending. That's right. To encourage you to take care of your health. That's right. Then you got to do it. That's right. Right. That's right. And it actually <laughs> save you money. That's the best best thing about yeah. it. What's in it for you? You will actually save yourself money. That's right. Mm -hmm. um, you brought up pension funds before. Yes. Uh, and it's an. I always thought it was kind of an innovative vehicle for taking care of city employees in retirement. Um, about what challenges do you face in investing those funds to produce the return? You touched on it a little bit before, uh, but it's something that I think it's not only relevant to our city, but uh, a lot of municipalities around the country are, are asking these questions. And you know, how do you in invest uh, in, well, there's, there's a follow-up to that, but I'll just mm -hmm. I'll let you go from. So pension funds is a very hot topic in the city of Chicago. Obviously, and we always hear that our pension funds are underfunded. We hear that all the time in the news everywhere. Well, I, as the treasurer of Chicago, I am automatically, we call that ex officio trustee. Mm -hmm. I automatically, just by being the treasurer of Chicago, I am a trustee of all four pension funds. That is for wow. Chicago police, Chicago fire, municipal employees, and laborers. So a lot of my time is invested in meetings of pension funds, but I love it, and here's why. Although it's underfunded. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and so and, that's a challenge. And, and what does that mean, just for yeah. some of our students in the audience? Yeah, so what that means is that all of the money that we're acquiring, like the city of Chicago pays into these pension funds. Yes. Employees pay into the pension funds. We always hear the story that the can has been kicked down the road, the can has been kicked down the road, where in the past, municipalities have been able to do things such as pension holidays, look that up, pension holidays, where they may say, let's delay the payment into the pension fund. Well, if you keep delaying, that's like with the credit card debt. If you keep delaying and don't pay the payments at an appropriate time, what happens? The interest accumulates, but also, the, I mean, the, the balance doesn't disappear. Mm -hmm. You still have to pay it, mm -hmm. but now, accumulation. It's just money on top of money now that's needed. And so now we are in this financial dire strait that we're like, uh-oh, the can's been kicked down the road, and now people like me are just coming into office saying, what do we do? So now we have to face that. And so as a trustee of the pension fund, we're trying to manage where, how do we pay employees, employee payments, employees that retire now? And sometimes we as residents or people that are listening to this in the news will say, well, that seems unfair that my tax dollars would go to pensions. 
Well, while that may seem unfair to some, the fact of the matter is it was promised to the employees. Mm -hmm. That's just like when you go out and you acquire employment, and when that job tells you that these are benefits that you will receive, that's basically a contract between you and that employer. Whether you agree with it or not, as the outside looking in, it's a contract. So as a, as a trustee of the pension fund, just today, matter of fact, I went to a pension fund meeting. And this is one of the great days for me. This is why I love coming from the south side and west side of Chicago. I'm sitting in a pension fund. And we have many, many fund managers, many fund managers that make up our pension funds, that, invest, that we invest our money in. We're sitting in a room with fund managers, and of course, for me, it's very important that we talk about what's the performance of that fund, that we talk about the rate of return. But in addition to that, because we're talking about taxpayers' dollars, we need to talk about the social responsibility of that fund manager. So now I'm going to ask tough questions in these meetings. I'm going to ask the question of, talk to me about the employee diversity of your firm. Yes. Talk to me about opportunities that you're providing to smaller brokers where they're able to work with your organization and gain the experience needed for them to be a minority firm mm -hmm. that can be a larger firm later because of the experience with you. Then I'll ask, talk to me about your charitable giving and I don't want to hear about, and I, won't say, I don't want to say I don't want to hear about because it's being recorded. <laughs> Let me say this. <laughs> we have some fund managers that are in other municipalities. Let's say Boston, New York. But they want to be a fund manager for Chicago's pension funds, which means they're receiving Chicago's taxpayers' dollars. Mm -hmm. So if I say, talk to me about giving back, I want to talk about that. And then they'll say, oh... In Boston, you know, we're doing great things. And in New York, we're doing this. And then I'll say, hmm, but you're meeting with us here in Chicago talking about Chicago's taxpayers' dollars. And if you want to work with Chicago's taxpayers' dollars, I want you to talk to me about how you're giving back in Chicago. Sometimes I'll tell you fund managers are taken back. <laughs> but for me... I feel like it's my fiduciary duty to ask the necessary questions because I've been tasked with being the manager for taxpayers. I represent them. And I believe if they were sitting at the table, the taxpayers would be asking those same questions. That's, that's really excellent. And we, we do have, yeah, let's. Thank you. And we do have a thriving financial services industry here. And um, one, things I've, one of the things I've noticed about some of the, uh, the various players in the financial services industry here, like Huntington, uh, you know, <laughs> they, they, they do a lot uh, for right. our community. That's right. And I think a lot of people think of finance companies as, oh, they're just doing their thing, and they, how, do, how do they really have anything to do with fulfilling a social justice mission? Mm -hmm. or, but they, they can do a lot with their mm -hmm. resources, and so I think that's just really You fantastic. look at what they're doing today. Yeah. So this is an example, when I talk about giving back, this is an example of giving back. Our students should have opportunities where they hear panels such as this. This is, this is reality. Mm -hmm. This is tangible. This yeah. is what our students should have access to. And one of the things that I spoke with the banking institutions about when I first got in office a couple of months ago, which feels like a couple of years now, but it's been a couple of months. <laughs> but when I first got in office a couple of months ago, on my very first day, I met with m several financial institutions. And here's what I said to them. Everything that I brought up, they said, oh, we're doing that. I said, you know, we really have to work on the unbanked population in Chicago. Every bank told me, we're doing that. And then I said, you know, we really need to work on an affordable mortgage program. Yeah. Every bank told me, we're doing that. And then I sat back and thought about it. Well, if you're doing it, who knows that you're doing it? And so we have to work together mm -hmm. where we can be able to market the programs that these financial institutions are doing, maybe people just don't know. Maybe there's the perception right. that we need to work on. 
the perception of financial institutions that may not be correct, but that's the perception. And we know perception is reality. So that's something as well that I plan on working on with financial institutions so that we can help really work through what the current perception is for residents and small businesses. That is, that is so fantastic, and it really sounds like a win-win it, it for Chicago. Yes. So that's excellent. Um, so financial literacy, it's a big topic. Uh, there's a well-known study that suggests only about a third of uh, American adults are financially literate, uh, meaning that they get some of it right, some of it not right, but don't have all of it, right? The ideas of understanding compound interest, diversification, mm -hmm. how you know inflation might affect your wages, things like this. Mm -hmm. um, but what, what are your thoughts on that? What, what would you say is to be financially literate? What, mm -hmm. What's something that people could walk away with today with one thing about how they could improve financial literacy or what, what it takes to get there for our mm -hmm. students or anybody else in the audience that it is interested? I think sometimes when we hear financial literacy, we get overwhelmed by the terminology. Mm -hmm. And it's actually not difficult, but it could be very simple. Yeah. So when we talk about financial literacy just for ourselves, and one thing, one piece of advice I would give to students we truly, and, and I know that we have many students that are studying finance, and I think that's fantastic. And by the way, I'm in the city treasurer's office working with broker dealers, and if you don't talk about those in class, please write this down. Broker dealers, research it. I need you to research fi um, fund managers. I need you to research investment consultants. Those are three types of people that I deal with every day. Broker dealers fund managers and investment consultants. And I would venture to believe that these people are very well off. <laughs> 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 and they make way more money than I do, okay? But that those are areas that we really, and I, I'm, I'm just trying to promote as much as possible to really implant in students how much opportunity is out there, as you know, Justin. Yes. <laughs> um, but when I think about financial literacy, especially as a student, we need to look at, and, and I don't know how it is now, but when I went just to Eastern Illinois undergrad, we couldn't walk down the hallway without credit card companies ready to offer me credit cards as a student. Is it like that still? I'm like, they just give you credit cards. Now, once you graduate and get a job, you can't find a credit card. <laughs> but as a student, everyone is just giving you credit cards. And so then I think about student loan. So, so number one, credit cards. Mm. Be mindful of the credit cards that you open. Look at the interest rate and do your homework. Compare interest rates, because I'll tell you as a student, you do have a choice. When Justin speak about choices, you are in the best situation right now. You have choices that a lot of adults do not have. So make the right choice on what credit cards, if any, that you will open. Number two, when you talk about student loans, and a lot of people have had to, per to acquire student loans. I acquire student loans. Do your homework. That's a very competitive field as well. Yes. There's a lot of different types of loans that you can acquire. Do your homework, research those rates, and don't feel as if you have to take the first thing offered to you. So I would just say those basic things as a student and save even just a little, save. Savings is so very important. And I'm not talking about saving hundreds of dollars. Your students, you gotta eat. I'm talking about saving a few dollars a day. You'll be amazed if the change left in your pocket at the end of the day, if you do like I tell my daughter, put in a piggy bank, you'll be amazed by Christmas time, what a great savings that'll be for you to purchase a gift for your parents. That's right. Not for yourself, for your parents. <laughs> <laughs> it, it is amazing. Uh, I think we all, all of us get caught up in our day to day but when you stretch out uh, what just a few dollars a day can do, that's right. Compound it, and and people know this. You know, you see those commercials just for a few dollars a day. That's right. Because they know it adds up, right? It does. Same with you. Yes. And uh, and and 
some of my classes, I talk about various apps that are out there. Uh, not only is it a competitive time for financial services, but there's mm -hmm. now a lot of applications. Mm -hmm. Really help you do a lot of this yep. uh, very effectively. Mm -hmm. they and can look help at your spending. That's right. So one thing that I learned, and I had to tell my nephew this. My nephew is a recent college graduate, and he would like eat out every single day, lunch, dinner. I would say, do you know how much money you're spending? In, in his defense, it is Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm like, you can you can go and purchase some food out the you know grocery store, and you can heat it up in that's your right. your that's rooms. Right. I mean, that's a yep. lot of money. So I would challenge you, if you're purchasing two meals a day, start by purchasing one. If you're purchasing one meal a day, start by saying maybe one or two days out the week, even one day out the week, I won't purchase food. Just watch how much you'll be saving. And I do suggest, Excellent you mentioned advice. about the apps, write it down. Yep. Because when you start looking on paper how much you're spending, it'll scare you. You will say, oh my gosh, imagine what I can do with this. It is very expensive to order out these days. And I'm saying that, I, and by the way, I hope I look very young and I hope you're thinking, oh my gosh, she looks like she just graduated with her MBA. But I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> it's been many years now. But I feel sometimes um, seasoned when I start talking about, it's so expensive to eat out these days. But you really need to write out. And I think that's key, Justin, when you talk about the apps. Yeah, it, it turns out that people who just check in on the app on a daily or regular basis to see where they are with their spending, it goes a long way in changing that's their right. behavior. That's right. It's a little bit of a behavioral thing happening that's here. That's right. Um, so yeah, the, the apps are excellent for that. They can help you save a few dollars that's a day. Right. I, th I, I think your advice really resonates. If you can cut out one meal. That's it. Because as I said, this is Chicago. Yeah. <laughs> we love our food. B but if we can cut out one, that can go a long way. Yes, it can. And you can still then, but you're still going out for one. Yes. But you're eventually in time. Monk here, here. Yeah. In mm -hmm. time, as you continue to write, then you'll say, oh, maybe I can cut back a little bit more. That's right. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. and you build that long-term discipline. That's right. And and it becomes a game, gamification That's right. of your money. Mm -hmm to get to where you want to be. <laughs> so um, so you, you touched a little bit about how the city of Chicago is considering the emerging field of socially mm -hmm. responsible investment. Uh, mm -hmm. This one's a little harder. Uh, well, I mean, what you are doing is amazing. Um, so that is, that is, I think that's just fantastic. Thank you. What about the environment? Yeah. You know? Uh, Important. $8 mm -hmm. billion dollars for a big city. Mm -hmm. Of course, you've got that kind of cash flow. Mm -hmm. um, these are big issues that we hear about in the headlines all the mm -hmm. time now. And you know, are, is this something that you all are thinking about how to use your resources and just cash flows of mm -hmm. you know day-to-day -day income and expenditures mm -hmm. to to move us a little bit more towards something a little more environmental? That's friendly? right. We have to protect the environment, and it's important because we have to make certain that we're sustainable. We have to make certain that we're protecting the environment so that we can make certain that we're being environment environmental friendly, obviously. But that's also with investing, and that's a very good point that you brought up. And one thing that my office does is that when we're looking at investments that we're making, we're always looking at companies to know whether they're environmentally friendly. That's very important because we want to make certain that, again, we're being stewards of taxpayers' dollars. Right. And we have to make certain that we are not investing in organizations that will be harmful to the environment. That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, th this has been a fantastic conversation. Thank you Wonderful. Again for coming. Thank you. And any other advice for students? It's kind of we you know what I would say to students? Um, really do your reading yourself about the news. Um, mm -hmm. There's a lot of things that we take as I call Bible. We take things that we see on television on the news or things that we read in the newspaper at newspaper as Bible. We have to do our own research. We have to do our own homework. 
and I would encourage you to watch more. A lot of people that I hear say, oh, when it comes to politics, that has nothing to do with me. I don't like politics. My parents didn't like politics. Where I come from, they don't like politics. Every politician, they're crooks. You hear that all the time. We, as those that, and I'm, I'm, the future is in your hands. The future is in your hands. Justin and I, we're just trying to make do right now. <laughs> the Before future, we pass that, there the you time. go. The future is in your hands. And I encourage you to be a part of the process. And in order to see a change, you have to be the change. You are our future. So I encourage you to not sit back and allow Justin and I to make all the decisions. Yes, yes. I encourage you to step forward and be a part of the process. I'll tell you, when I was attending Roosevelt University for my MBA, I had absolutely no idea that I would be the city treasurer of Chicago. No idea. I didn't study political science. No idea that I would be in this position that I am today. So another piece of advice I'll tell you is, you know where you've been, but you don't know where you're going. That's right. Prepare yourself. And my mother always taught me to let your name precede you. That means to have a good reputation. You never know where life is going to take you. So some of the things we do, when I look at social media, and sometimes I'm telling you, I got nephews. Oh my gosh, I can pass out when I see some of the words they put on social media. <laughs> so much so I have to respond on their page and I say, now you know you should not be talking like this. And I say that for a reason. Because when you go and look for a job, if you think that that job, although I think that there's a law, maybe they shouldn't, but if you think that that job is not going to look at your social media, look at how you're presenting yourself, you know, if you want to say something to your friends, you don't need to do it on a major platform. <laughs> Call them up, shoot them a text, but just be mindful of what you're doing and understand that all of this is preparing you for the future. So I always say maintain a good reputation. I think that's very important. And I encourage you to be the best that you can be. Enjoy college. Enjoy undergrad, graduate school, PhD, whatever it is, enjoy it. I had a ball when I was an undergrad and I still learned. I had a ball when I was pursuing my MBA, and I still learned. Roosevelt University is going to prepare you for something great, and I encourage you to take advantage and embrace this opportunity. And so I'm just excited when I look around the room and the diversity of the room. Yes. This is how it should be, unity. Mm -hmm. City of Chicago, state of Illinois, the United States of America, the world, unity. I encourage you to not have just misconceptions about people that you may not know. That's right. We can't judge each other. So those are just tidbits that I like to leave with the students. I just think there's so much out there in the world that you can grab onto. And no dream is too small. The title, The American Dream Reconsidered. No dream is too small and no dream is too big. I never thought a girl like me from Inglewood would be managing an $8 billion portfolio. But you never know what your future holds. So dream big and be all that you can be. Thank you very much. Well, I got to collect myself there after that. That was excellent. Um, do our do our students have any questions? Or does anybody in the audience have questions? I'm, I'm an instructor, so I'm biased toward the students. Sorry, everybody <laughs> else. But I guess I'll just hand you this microphone. Oh, well, now I'm off. Oh. <laughs> Hello. Hello. So I'm a political science major, not a finance major. So my question was going to be about politics. Okay. Um, in your race in particular, in 2019, you had to deal with 14 candidates running for mayor mm -hmm. with people wanting to research them, usually two to 
to six aldermanic candidates mm-hmm. running. So how do you make an office like yours known and how do you promote yourself as a candidate in such like a crowded field where people feel like they have to know everyone? Mm. Wow, what a great question. And what an appropriate question. We've spoken so much about finance, we could talk a little about politics. (laughs) And so everything that he said was absolutely right. Everything. And I mean, this, my race for city treasurer, to be honest with you, this was the first contested race that we had for city treasurer in the history of Chicago. And so a lot of people didn't even know that they elected a city treasurer. And before me, city treasurers were appointed before they were elected. So I am the city treasurer that actually was not appointed, which is even better, and let me tell you why. Because I get to be independent. That means that when I walk into City Hall, I'm not beholden to anyone but the residents. That means that no one appointed me but the residents. But in that race, again, Not a known race. A lot of people looking at everything else and wonder, I didn't even know there was a city treasurer. So then, how to make myself known and how to talk about the office? When you start talking about $8 billion of taxpayers' money, then people want to listen. Because they thought, wow, you know, I guess I, I guess I thought about the money was received, but I never thought about what happens with that money. I didn't know we had an office that actually manages the money. And so people are truly interested and knowing where their money is going. And so I have found that once people know, but your question is, how do we make people know? So as you know, I had to spend a lot of money to let people know that there was a race for city treasurer. That was very hard to do. We had to raise money, and we had to spend money so that that we brought awareness for people to know that. And how do I make certain that we're prevalent now? Forums such as this. Because what you're going to do now, you're going to be paying attention to the office of the city treasurer because we're talking about taxpayers' dollars. Very good question. Thank you. All right. I think we've got time for a few more. Oh, thanks, Ryan. My Oprah impression. Right here, right here. (laughs) Thank you for coming, first of all. It's really a pleasure to see you. Thank you. And be a part of this. My question is, as um, trustee for such a big budget, you have to deal with a lot of people, mm-hmm. per se. I'm sure you have to deal with the state, mm-hmm. and the, because I'm sure it affects the city, mm-hmm. because we are the biggest city in the mm-hmm. state. Mm-hmm. How do you deal with so many different you know, mm-hmm. politicians mm-hmm. and fund managers and mm-hmm. banks, because it's such a big fund? It is. I'm sure people have their own agendas, <laughs> kind of, you Certainly. know. Certainly. So that's my question. <laughs> Certainly. So I neglected to mention that my first run in politics was actually as a state representative. So I graduated from Roosevelt University, but I was uh, still working full time. And years later, I made a decision to leave corporate America to actually work for my community. And that's when I was introduced to politics. I ran for state representative and I won. So I actually have relationships with the state. Um, I'm hoping that would benefit us as a city because certainly I know that there are resources that we need from the state and there are more resources that we need from, from the state. So I hope to leverage those relationships. But certainly in the role for city treasurer, not only am I dealing with so many different entities, but also governmental agencies. And one thing that I want to make my business is to make certain that I keep in contact and have a close relationship with the state treasurer. Because we have a lot of people, when they hear treasurer too for me, they say, are you the one that collects property taxes? Well, that's the county treasurer. The county treasurer collects property taxes in Cook County, which Chicago is in within Cook County. We have a state treasurer, and then we have the city treasurer. And so we have to make certain to be in constant dialogue and making certain, you know, one thing that I have to stay focused on, and I tell people all the time, it's not about the others around me. I have to stay focused on what I'm tasked to do. And I have to stay focused on the people that I represent. And that's all 77 communities of Chicago. Hi. Hi. 
my name is um, Takaira. I am not a finance major. Okay. <laughs> I'm a biochemistry major. So wow. Yes. <laughs> so I would consider myself um, financially uninformed in a lot of areas. So my question is, um, maybe I'm misinformed on the scope of your office, but does your office offer a public gathering similar to like a city council meeting um, that will conduct civil conversations about where our tax dollars are going? Hmm. So currently, that does not exist, but what a great idea. Um, maybe that's something that we should consider. So I don't. I wouldn't say that you're uninformed because that's a question that I don't. I don't know if anyone has ever thought of. Um, so uh, I think that's a great idea. One thing that I have committed to is transparency, and I think that it's important that we know where our tax dollars are going. But it's also important that we know how much money we have. And so I do want to make certain, and that's something that my office is looking into, to determine how we're going to transfer that information to residents. So thank you for the suggestion. Hi, good afternoon. My name is Lizzie G. I am an alumni of Roosevelt. I was not a finance major. I pursued my master's in integrated marketing communications, but I love coming to attend these conferences to hear about the great work from fellow Roosevelt alums and also the great knowledge that you shared. So in your new role, I just want to salute you and thank you so much for being here and just giving us a lot of insight and just inspiration to, to keep going. Um, I'm a positive hip hop artist and I work with a lot of youth. So through my company, a lot of work, that a lot of things that you just said will definitely help me in my role. So I just wanna thank you so much. Thank you, Lizzie. And you know what, congratulations to you. And I encourage you to keep on the work that you're doing. I'm confident it's not easy. I'm confident it isn't. But I encourage you to keep going. Thank you. And Yolanda, there was a young lady back there with this tan jacket on the aisle, and then this gentleman up front. And Madam Treasurer, she might be interested in our small business women's expo. Oh, thank company. you. Our office, when we talk about small business growth, we are going to be having an expo on Saturday, November 16th, and that's in a few months. And one thing that I had also um, talked to my staff about is to make certain that we are having expos within the communities. A lot of people have challenges with transportation. We want it to be convenient. And so you're going to be hearing about expos on the south and west sides of Chicago where people would be able to access. We're actually gonna have a, a women entrepreneur expo, November 16th. That'll be my first expo for the Office of City Treasurer. Yes. Hi. I taught at Roosevelt several years back in the management department. So I have some experience with Roosevelt. I appreciate you coming here as an alum and speaking to us. I realize it's not in your bellywick, but can you speak to the prospectives for the budget and right. how we're gonna fill the gap? Yeah. Well, that's an important question. Um, so I get asked that question a lot, by the way. And my response is typically the same, but I'll be honest first and then I'll give you my thoughts. So the honest answer is, I have no control of how revenue is received. Once the revenue is received, now I am the custodian of the revenue. So who determines revenue? The mayor, the city council, right? We have 50 aldermen around the city of Chicago. And they do have some very tough decisions to make. Now this is the personal side talking now. As a taxpayer, I would say they have a very, some tough decisions to make. Because one thing that we know that Chicago, unfortunately the history of Chicago is the haves and the have nots. And the have nots are at a point to say, even the haves, right? The have nots are at a point to say, we don't have any more to give. And then the haves are at the point to say, we're giving but we don't see where this money is going. And so there's, there's so much going on c within the city of Chicago that I know we need to iron out. And so Mayor Lifert has truly a great task ahead, ahead of her. The 50 aldermen truly have great tasks ahead of them. I look forward to working with them. I mentioned before, I certainly know the needs of our community. I know that there are resources that are needed. And I know that education is so very important. And we need a fair and equitable education system. It should not matter the zip code that you live in to determine how well of an education you receive. 
our tax dollars should be appropriated accordingly. Now that's the personal side of me that has a vested interest such as you and everyone else in making certain that our tax dollars are put in the place they should be. He had one question right there in the pink, oh. pink behind, yeah, yeah. That was the last question, I think. Good afternoon, my name is uh, Mario Nupshaw and I'm a business student here at Roosevelt. And um, I just had, first of all, I wanna thank you for coming out sharing with us on this afternoon. Thank you. And secondly, the question I have is, you mentioned that you left the private sector to get into politics yeah. and, and you went to school. Mm -hmm. But what I'm trying, the question I'm asking is, I was in, I had an employee of 26 years and they relocated to Mexico. So as a result of that, that sent me back to school. How did you make your adjustment? Mm -hmm. I, I, I believe I'm doing a good job adjusting, but just give me a tidbit on how, how you did it. Wow, that's wonderful. Well, I know it wasn't wonderful that your job left, but you know I do believe that everything happens for a reason. Um, so I am a woman of faith, and I, I truly trust that everything happens for a reason. Sometimes things don't happen as we want them to, but it's for a reason. Really, when I went to pursue my Bachelor of Science in Finance at Eastern Illinois University, Justin, I have no idea what made me pursue that. No idea. Who would have known that the Bachelor of Science in Finance, that the MBA in Finance, would prepare me for the role of city treasurer? Who would have known that? I wouldn't have known it. You never know where life is going to take you. When I went to Eastern Illinois University in the College of Business, I don't even know if I can count on one hand the other minorities in the College of Business. I was very uncomfortable, very uncomfortable. So much so that I questioned whether I was up to par to be able to even finish the program because there was really not other people like me. I was from the south, south side of Chicago, I didn't know. And my mother always told me, don't worry about that. You're as smart as the next person. There's no one better than you. And so I'll share that with you and every other student in this room. And I tell young people this all the time, that there is no one better than you. And then I will also tell them, and you're not better than anyone either. We're all the same. Human beings trying to make a living, trying to make a great life for ourselves. So I'll tell you, I know it's uncomfortable. I was certainly uncomfortable when I was one of few in the College of Business at Eastern Illinois University. I was uncomfortable when I went to pursue my MBA at Roosevelt University, and I was one of few that looked like me. But you wouldn't tell that I was uncomfortable because I walked around as if I was the one. So you just have to make certain that, that you just, you have to be your best encourager. No one can encourage you better than you can. So I'm just so happy that you're here. And I know that there's more students like you that are here. And I know that you're gonna do well. Thank you.